Hello once again, FCF family. You're looking at me and saying he's dressed up today. He usually just comes in his shirt, and that's true. But I just did a little recording and an appreciation for a very important event, and that was, and I want to share that with you. Uh, it was a congratulations to Pastor Marcus from Destiny and Dominion Word Ministries in Toronto on his 20th anniversary as founder and pastor of that great and wonderful ministry in the city of Toronto. And so I want to officially, on behalf of all of you today, uh, from this blog, also to wish him again uh, all of God's best and to thank him for the 20 years of service to the city of Toronto and most of all to the kingdom of God. Today I want to talk to you on keeping the dream alive. That's the title of my message to you today, is keeping the dream alive. Someone has rightfully said, you don't need to kill the dreamer to destroy him. All you need to do is to kill his dream. And if you kill his dream, the dreamer will die. The longer I live, the more I realize the necessity of keeping dreams alive. I still have a dream. I have a dream for this nation. I have a dream yet unfulfilled that I expect to see happen in this great nation of Canada from sea to sea to sea. And we are all a part of that. Acts 2.17 tells us that old men will dream dreams. Now that's not a sign of old age. Dreaming dreams is not a sign of old age. Young men dream dreams too. Young men have visions but also have dreams. But what that is really saying is even to the end of this journey, the dream must be kept alive. If we've had any challenge in the last couple of years, it's been the challenge to stay focused, to keep our eyes on Jesus, to keep the main thing the main thing, to lead the church in what the church has always been about, and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ, being aware of the circumstances around us, but not getting entangled in the web that has been cast. We are living, after 50 years of ministry, we are living in the most divisive moment that I've ever ministered in. There are all kinds of things around us to divide us. Issues right down to your health that have the potential to divide us and yet we understand today where all division comes from. But there is something that unites us. And the gospel of Jesus Christ unites us. It brings us to oneness, oneness of vision, oneness of purpose, oneness of, 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 of values. And it brings us together. It doesn't divide us. It brings us together. And so I'm challenging you today, in the spite of all that's happening around you, keep your dream alive. Don't allow the circumstances to kill your dream. Joseph, the great dreamer. Now, here's something I want to share with you, and, and, and I, I really want to get it into your heart today. Joseph, the great dreamer, had to deal with his household and his brethren in order to keep the dream alive. Many churches right now are, are in disagreement among themselves. If you don't keep the main thing the main thing, you'll get distracted by all of the opinions that are circulating around you. Joseph had to look past his brothers and he had to keep the dream that God had given him alive and make every circumstance of his life serve that dream. And that's an important thing that I just said to you right here. When you begin to understand, I, I want to share this with you. To me, life and church life is like a pyramid. It is, it is like a, 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 a pyramid with, with God at the top and then it comes down and here's, here's everyday life down here. And we live looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith. This lying down here, the, the, 
it, it can only, if you focus on keeping this perfect, you will miss the ultimate. It's not my job as the pastor to keep all of this functioning perfectly. It's my job as a pastor to direct you toward Jesus Christ himself and cause you to see him. And in the story of Joseph, we see this, but also in the story of what we call the prodigal son, the 15th chapter of the book of Luke. And in that chapter, we see a man who valued inheritance more than he valued relationship. Now I want to talk to you about this. Inheritance more than relationship. The things that he received from his father were of greater value to him than his father himself. I'm going to tell you something. An improper understanding of inheritance will negatively affect relationship in the natural and in the spiritual. Overemphasis on inheritance will negatively affect relationship. I want, to, I want you to notice something. When the boy was down in the pig pen and had squandered his living, he came to an understanding. Now listen, he didn't get up and say, I will go to my father's house. He said, I'm going to go to my father. The reason being, you can't fix these things on the level of the relationship of brotherhood. You have to approach it from father and son. Not brother to brother, but father and son. He said, I will arise and go back to my father. Because your father holds you in a place in his heart that your brother doesn't. There's a relationship with your father you don't have with your brother, your sister, or anyone else in the church or in your life. And so he said, I will go back to my father. In other words, I'm going back where this all started. I'm going back to relationship. And from relationship, I will get my life in order again. Understand this today, that in the church, we cannot fix one another. In the church, we cannot change one another. There's a lot of opinions in the church today. You cannot deal with every opinion, Pastor. You must point people away from distraction back to relationship. And when people can see Jesus as he is, and see our Heavenly Father as His heart really is for us, then in relationship, when you get in relationship and understand and value relationship, the things on the horizontal plane will come into place when proper relationship is maintained. If proper relationship isn't maintained, you have nothing but crisis on the horizontal level. And so when he rose and went back home, he went to his father. His father, when relationship was restored, the boy left rich, came back a pauper. But when he came back to relationship, there was a ring on his finger, shoes on his feet, a robe on his back, and a fatted calf and a feast prepared for him. What did he learn? Seek first the relationship of your father, and all of the other things will be added unto you. Now, let me, can I also remind you here? Your heavenly Father knows what you have need of. He looks after your health, your wealth, your peace of mind, your relationships on the horizontal level. He takes care of them if you will look unto him and keep proper relationship there. Pastor, we are entering into, we hear about phase four of the pandemic, but I want to tell you, just lay all of that aside. For the church, we are entering into a phase that you need to walk in the wisdom of God. You need to keep focus. You need to keep Jesus before the people. You need to cause them to look unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith, and you need to cause them to build strong relationships with God himself. And when we do these other things, 
these other things will come into line. I'm asking you, are you going to keep your dream alive? Or are you going to allow the circumstances around you to rob you of your dream and to kill you slowly, piece by piece? Or are you going to look to the one that gave you the dream and say, I'm going to cause everything to rise to you. I'm going to keep the dream alive and I'm going to keep these people in relationship with you. You see, I can't fix my brother. That's my father's job. I can't fix my brother. That's my father's job. My father loves me, but my father also loves my elder brother who's having a problem with me. Do you understand that? But when I focus on my relationship with my father, understanding that he has the same love and relationship with this person that's causing me difficulty and doesn't celebrate with me today, when I understand that and I leave that in the hands of my father because he has the love and the grace for me in my time of need and he has the love and the grace needed for my brother in times of misunderstanding. And so whether you agree on all that's happening around you, don't allow it to become a point of separation but look unto Jesus and let him, let him work at the brother level and we walk with him at the father-son level. Keep your dream alive. God bless you. I love you. And I pray for you daily.